Well, thank you for coming. Uh, this talk is called React, Learn Once, Write Anywhere. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter. There I am, HoltBT. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is like the most ill-advised talk ever. Uh, it's not, not a good idea to give this talk. I have a lot of moving parts, so if something breaks, I, I apologize. Um, and then the other thing on the side is normally I let people tweet at me during the course of this talk, and it like shows their tweets on the sides, right? So one, I, I had a really bad experience with that one, so I don't do that anymore. Uh, User-generated content is a uh, 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 minefield, I'll put, to put it lightly. I also used to work at Reddit, and as you might imagine, I'm very experienced with really bad user-generated content. So uh, instead, I decided to put up what people are tweeting about during the election. And I started this at the beginning of Zach's talk. So since then, it, keep in mind, it is currently f like 4 AM in New York City. And well, I would make it like 1 in San Francisco. So during that time, we've, <laughs> we've had 761 tweets about Donald Trump. So that's, that's pretty cool. You'll have to pardon my fascination with the impending doom of my nation. <laughs> OK. So React, learn one thread anywhere. And this is on the command line, which is kind of fun, right? Uh, again, ill-advised. I'm sure there's something could go wrong with it, but uh, fuck it, let's do it. OK. So my name is Brian Holt. Uh, I'm a present resident of San Francisco. Uh, I've lived there for about two years, uh, usually from uh, Salt Lake City. That's, I spent 15 years there. Most people are like, where the hell is Salt Lake City? And that's OK. <laughs> you don't have to know where it is. Uh, uh, I work at Netflix, uh, which is pretty cool. I like it. Uh, I've been there for about 18 months. Um, who here and subscribes to Netflix? OK. And who here just pirates everything? <laughs> OK. I knew they were out there. <laughs> it's cool. I forgive you. Uh, we're working on making it better. Uh, in fact, we're working, we're working especially hard on uh, on Poland and Polish and those sorts of things. So expect really cool things for Poland coming from Netflix soon. Uh, I work on the uh, non-member side of the experience. I work on the web team and also the node team, uh, which a lot of people, or some people don't know that we use a lot of node in production at Netflix. In fact, you as a user, almost all of your requests make it to, through or into node at some point. Uh, we also use, use a lot of Java. We're famous for microservices. And this might be the first Netflix talk ever not about microservices. I don't write microservices, so I don't give a shit. OK. So let's talk about React. So uh, historically, this has been a bit of a .NET conference, but they're, they're reaching new horizons, which is pretty cool. So how many of you here are .NET developers primarily? It's most of the hands. OK. Uh, Front-end developers in the room? It's my people. These are my people. The rest of you can leave. Just kidding. No, this is great. Um, this, will, this can be useful for you as well. So that's what I do. Um, I actually started out as a PHP developer, uh, which was an accident. And then I became a front-end developer, which was also an accident. Uh, so I have quite an accidental career. Um, but I wrote PHP for two years, which people like to shit on PHP because it, <laughs> it has its problems. But it's, I, th I think it's kind of easy to write, which is good. And then people like to shit on JavaScript, and fuck you, JavaScript's awesome. So uh, there's this kind of newfangled shininess called React, and it kind of just set the front end world on fire. It's seemingly overnight. Like, I don't know how it felt for you, but I, I felt like one moment like with my hipster glasses on, I was like, I'm writing React and no one else is, and I feel really cool about it. And then all of a sudden, it was no longer cool, right? Like it was like your favorite band getting picked up. Right? And then it was no longer cool, and I didn't know what to do about it, so I just kept doing it. Um, I actually launched Reddit's uh, very first React code. And I heard later from one of the React uh, core team members that uh, we were, Reddit was one of the very first companies to launch production React that Facebook had not directly interacted with, right? Uh, which was really cool to them because uh, we discovered React on our own, not through them. We, we evaluated it ourselves, and we said, this is cool. We didn't take any convincing. We, it was, it, the merits of it itself stood by itself, which was uh, really cool. Uh, it's also kind of a funny story of how we launched uh, React. So we had been writing Angular previous to that point. I was the director of front end for Marketplace Activities, which you might hear 
Reddit marketplace activities and say, what is that? And the answer is, now it is nothing, because it's gone. Uh, so don't worry about it. But we used to have a marketplace, which was pretty cool. I was kind of Etsy-like. And I, up to that point, we had been writing some Angular uh, tied to a Django backend. And um, I, I discovered React through one of my coworkers. I was like, this is really cool. Uh, I want to launch code in it. And people, like, we sat down in a meeting and said, no, we don't want to want write React. We just figured out this Angular business. Let's stick to Angular. We're just going to keep writing Angular. And I, I didn't like that answer, so I just went ahead and rewrote the most important part of our app in React and then just launched it and then went on vacation. <laughs> like an adult. Um, like a good, good coworker. Uh, so I rewrote our entire shopping cart funnel in, in React and launched it, and then they just had to deal with it. So like, we now have React in production, ha, 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 deal with it. Um, it which that's actually a really good thing to follow the, the talk about getting fired because that actually might end up happening. I didn't get fired, luckily. And people are like, fine, this is cool, but screw you for doing that. Uh, so yeah, we ended up writing and launching a React project. Uh, it ended up being really great for us. Uh, my resounding moment of this was a good idea is I left on vacation, went on a cruise, launched our most important part of our site on React. And there's obviously bugs, right? Whenever you launch a brand new project, there are bugs. And I was literally unavailable from the internet being somewhere in the middle of the Caribbean uh, Sea. And one of our backend developers was able to actually go in, read the code, figure out what was wrong with it, and fix it, and then relaunch it. And it was totally fine. I didn't even get an email about it, which is really great, because this backend developer is you know, grumpy, like I imagine many .NET developers are, and doesn't like you know, fixing other people's problems, which is just everyone. And he was able to fix it, launch it, and said this was actually a really pleasant experience. So let's, let's discuss a little bit then what is React. So how many people here have written any React at all? OK, how many of you have like literally never even looked at the docs? You should look at the docs. <laughs> I'm surprised. At least people have looked at the docs. OK, cool. So um, let's just uh, give a little like brief primer on what React is, though. So around the peak of jQuery times, I think everyone here has written jQuery, or at least had to look at it. And it's not a bad thing. I, I think jQuery definitely pushed the web forward in a really positive way. Got some really great ideas out there. Um, but people are saying, like, we have these web applications, and we're writing them in jQuery, and we, we have these spaghetti codes, right? Like, it feels almost like go-to statements that like go to here, go to here, go to here, like event listener, event listener, function, event listener, event listener, function, right? So it's, it ended up being this just kind of spaghetti bowl of code. And so people are like, this is the wrong way to write applications. We've kind of figured out the back end parts with Ruby on Rails, Django Python, you know, web.py even back then, those sorts of things. Like these are good ideas. Let's take these application ideas and write JavaScript applications. And so we kind of we came up with a, a bunch of frameworks around the time. We came up with Backbone. We came up with Knockout. We came up with some, some of these uh, really interesting ideas with frameworks. And specifically, Backbone was interesting pe because people said, like, we have MVC on the server. This is great. This revolutionized the way that we write backend uh, services. Why don't we just take that and apply that to the front end? Because what's good for the back end is good for the front end. Now, now that I say that out loud, people are thinking, like, OK, that's a really dumb point to make, right? What is good for the back end is not good for the friend, right? But at the time, that was the, the prevailing thinking is model view controllers, separation of concerns. These things are, are interesting and good ideas uh, because that works well for the server. You have a model. The model talks to the database. You have a view, right, that, that actually goes out to the user. And then you have the thin layer of controllers that route things in between. But that doesn't work for the, the front end, right? We don't have a database. We don't necessarily have, we have interfaces, we don't have views, right? Like these are kind of different ideas. But we kind of kept going that way, and we got Angular, and we got Ember, and we kind of maintained these MVC type ideas. Well, a team at Instagram uh, just decided like, this is not the best way to, to build apps. We, we're getting increasing complexity as we get bigger and bigger apps, and that's the point of separation concerns, is that you, you maintain a, a relatively constant level of complexity, or at least a linear in increase of complexity um, as we gain, as we scale our application. 
So they said, like, what, what can we do? What is the right pattern to model interfaces? Because it's not MVC. And so they kind of went back to this idea of, like, well, the, the web, before we introduced JavaScript, worked really well. You loaded a page, you refreshed the page, and the page updates, right? You have these ideas of snapshots of a page that, given this URL, we get a page that looks like this, right? And that, I think that mental model works for a lot of people, and it's uh, the way that we already expect the web to work. So they kind of took this idea, and they ran with it a little bit, and they said, well, wh why can't we just have an interface that we we give input into, it takes that input, which we call state in React, right? And given this state, we get a, a view that looks like this. And if we change this little bit of state, then the, you know, the view looks a little bit different. And they decided to kind of run with that, and they ended up with this React idea. Uh, we'll, go, we'll get there in just a second. Uh, and this ended up being pretty awesome. They re rewrote. Uh, parts of Instagram into it until eventually all of Instagram was written in React. And that kind of started to bleed over to their parent company, Facebook, and Facebook started writing pieces of their code in React as well. Khan Academy adapted it. Uh, and they kind of had this uh, stumbling block, which I'm going to skip over to that one, uh, JSX. People were, were stumbling over JSX and not really understanding what it is. And a lot of times people can't separate React from JSX. And they are, they're totally different. JSX is just... Uh, it introduces uh, basically a new primitive to JavaScript, uh, XML-like syntax, which basically means you can write HTML in your CS or in your JavaScript. And people looked at this and they said, "This looks gross, right? This feels exactly like the HTML of yesterday, yesteryear, when it had on click equals JavaScript colon bullshit, right? <laughs> just like long uh, tails of just crazy, stupid things." And we was like, "We want to get it away from that. Why are we pushing ourselves back towards it?" Myself included, I looked at React the day that it launched, and I said, I'm not writing HTML in my JavaScript. Like, you, you can't make me. You can't make me do it. And uh, that's, that's what a lot of people's first impression, and I think it really harmed React, at least in the initial uptake. It was a really great idea, but no one cared about it. People laughed at it for like 18 months until companies like Reddit, Yahoo, Khan Academy, um, all the, these sorts of companies started launching production code. Airbnb was another big one uh, in React, and people were like, okay, I, we can start taking this seriously. And so uh, you just had to get over that, uh, that idea that uh, JSX is harmful. You can, you can totally write React without JSX. In fact, for those of you that attended my re workshop yesterday, that's what we do for the first half of the workshop, is we just write plain JavaScript, no JSX. Um, React and it's it's still fine. It's still fun to write. So let's let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing right now. Then this is obviously the command line, uh, which is kind of a weird place to give a presentation. But I thought it was it was fun. It's a stupid gimmick. I like stupid gimmicks. And I wrote an interface on top of blessed. So what is blessed? Blessed. If you've ever heard of curses, right? This is blessed, right? It's it's meant to be a dumb pun that way. But it basically lets you write interfaces for uh, the console using Node and JavaScript. And then some smart, brave soul wrote a little React wrapper on top of that. And we ended up with uh, what's called React Blessed. So basically, I'm able to write React and have that target the command line, which is, I don't know, I know, I don't know about you, I think it's pretty great. So, and that's kind of the point of this, this talk, is we're talking about uh, why React is a really interesting paradigm, and it's so interesting to other people that it's bleeding over into other, it, it, it's, it was built for the web, and people are like, this is so awesome, we want to write React everywhere. So let's talk about the differentiation between React and React DOM, because I think that's the biggest, or the best way to, to demonstrate that. Uh, React is just the package that you write components in, right? React is very component-oriented that you have, for example, like a drop-down, right? And the drop-down is inside of your form, and your form is inside of your app, right? That you have components which are made up of other components, which are made up of other components, which are made up of other components, right? You just have it's this you know, Russian nesting dolls. But if you think about it, that's the way the web looks anyway, right? We have tags inside of other tags inside of other tags, right? React is just mimicking the interfaces that we're ultimately trying to create, right? There's no translation, or very little translation in your head that has to go on. 
So we have React, right? And React just builds components. These components don't actually care where they go, or they have no concept of where they're going, right? In the sense of that, you write a React component, it doesn't know if it's going to target the, the web, it doesn't know if it's going to target iOS, it doesn't know if it's going to target, I don't know, the PlayStation or something like that. So you have this, basically you have the React, then you have these uh, thin glue layer, and then you have what it's actually targeting, right? So you have React components that you built for the web, and you have the browser, right? And then you have this layer in between called React DOM that just takes your components from React and puts them onto the DOM, right? It's what actually does the, the dirty work of writing out to the DOM. But what's cool about it is we can swap that layer right there and we can have it target other things. For example, React Blessed, right? React Blessed takes my React components and, and takes those and targets uh, the command line, which is insane, right? I'm writing JavaScript interfaces for the command line which I think is really cool. So uh, React, well, how does React actually end up working then? If it's not MVC, what is it? So what we decided to do is we, we kind of went with this page refresh model. Uh, and we decided as well, we being the community, but we also being the, the authors of React, what they decided was um, we have these separations of concerns, right? And they're not working for us. Separating these concerns in this arbitrary way doesn't help us, right? Separating concerns for writing Rails, right? It makes sense to write a model, and the model talks to the database, and everything that talks to the database lives in the model. Makes sense, right? So anytime you have a problem with talking to the database, your first instinct, which is usually right, is I have a problem with my model. And that, make that debugging experience is much better because you see a problem and you know where the problem is. Like that's really a big powerful part of MVC is the debugging story, the debugging experience. And also the readability, right? If you want to understand how your program is not performing well with the database, you go read all the models and you see how they're interacting with the database. And that's pretty powerful to have an idea and instantly know where it is without having to read any code, right? This idea of, I, I, I have this problem, I know where to go. We didn't have that with, with the web, we didn't have that with uh, when we were writing user interfaces. So I'm going to give you an example. I like to pick on Angular, but the, the, and the only reason for that is I wrote a lot of Angular before I wrote React. So if I have a counter on a, on a page, and I start clicking increase on the counter, and it's just increasing a number right next to it, right? Let's say all of a sudden it starts adding three instead of one, right? And then it stops doing it. And then later it starts adding three again, and then it stops doing it. If I'm writing Angular, I'm not really much closer to figuring out what my problem is, right? You might ask yourself, okay, this, this button is going wrong. What code is broken here? Well, I click increase, and then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It could be in the directive. It could be in one of the other directives, right? Because a component can have multiple directives. It can be in the component. It can be in the controller. It can be in the factory. It can be in the service. It can be in one of the other services. It can be in the template, which, God forbid, that's the worst place for it to be, right? So as you, as you can hopefully see, by s identifying the problem, we're, at, we're actually no closer to uh, figuring out where it is, and we have and we don't really even have an idea of where to start, which is a, a big problem. Now let's talk about if this same problem uh, arose in, in React. Now I'm, I'm going to admit it's not, it's not all rosy all the time in React, but I'm going to say that uh, on the whole it's, actually, it's much better. Not only is it better, but it's a, it's a much better experience. So if I click on it and something goes wrong, with React, what, instead of having our concerns separated out into all these different places, what we do is we take all of our concerns for very small components and just mush them together. We just shove them together as close as possible, and so everything lives right there in that component for that component, right? So if I have a problem and this is increasing incorrectly, meaning my state of my component is not working the way I anticipate it, I know where the problem is because only that component can modify its own state, right? The parent can't modify it, the child can't modify it, only this particular component can modify its own state. So by seeing the problem, I've already identified where it is. And that's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. You should probably think it's fantastic. 
<laughs> so that's, that's the, the sum of the story of what React is and why it's really useful. So instead of separating concerns, we, we mush all the concerns together for small components. And then we build these very opinionated components, and we take those and we build bigger things out of them so that you know, we have the drop-down and the input components that are inside of the form component. And so the form component only worries about submitting the form, and each individual input worries about keeping its own state. It's pretty great. So JSX, that was a, that was a big stumbling block for it. People eventually got over it. And I will say that it's, for me, it's just an initial stumbling block for a lot of people. I will say out of all the companies that I know, uh, at least in San Francisco, writing React, I, I know of only one company that's elected not to use JSX. And that's because their engineering manager is kind of weird. So well, whatever, <laughs> take that as you will. God bless you. Um, it's good. And the, the reason why it's good is we're writing HTML in our JavaScript, but why are we doing that? We have to ask ourselves why we've done that. We're writing code, we're writing JavaScript to mimic markup, right? We're, we're generating markup for the page. So instead of trying to write code that mimics markup, it'd be great if we could just write the markup in the first place, right? So that's kind of the idea behind JSX. Uh, I had another demo, and uh, I've heard of people getting like screwed when they're trying to fly with like uh, Arduino with winer, wires coming out because it looks like a bomb. <laughs> so I elected not to bring this demo with me for fear of it looking like a bomb. Uh, Really all it is is it's an Arduino with a breadboard and it has a little light on it that flashes, right? Like the absolute most classic stupid Arduino project ever. But what, what's fantastic about it is I wrote this demo in React. I wrote it in JavaScript, I wrote it in React, which was then uh, compiled to run on an Arduino. So I wrote the flashing light, I swear to God, this is true, I wrote the flashing light in, uh, in, our, in React, which I think is just absolutely amazing. So we're not limited necessarily by, by platform with React, which is ultimately what this, tar this uh, talk is about. In fact, since I wrote this talk a couple of weeks ago, a couple of really smart uh, people, one of them being Ken Wheeler, uh, came out with React Music, that you can actually compose music using React. I swear to God, I'm not making this up, which I think is also just fantastic. I, I also cannot believe that there's almost been a thousand Trump tweets. Holy shit. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next part of my demo. Uh, we're going to refresh that. Nope. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So this is my browser now, which is pretty awesome. And yeah. So as you can see there on the side, we have the same kind of poll going on. And notice that we have like nice animations, we have all those kind of things, and that kind of stuff just becomes pretty easy with React with the way that you manage state, right? You can have components that orchestrate themselves to have nice and complex animations. So React, it's pretty awesome. I'm gonna suggest that you try it. Um, it's a really pleasant way of writing user interfaces. I'm, I'm not gonna say it's, uh, the easiest to write. I'm not going to say it's the quickest to write. In fact, I can definitely assert that it's not the quickest to write. The reason why I think so many people jump on, particularly the Angular bandwagon, at least Angular 1, which is since Angular 2 is, I think, released today. Yay, finally. <laughs> um, Angular 1 had such a rapid fire uptake because have, if you've ever gone through like the hello world of of Ang Angular, it is just stunning how easy it is to write fairly complicated systems, right? You just you create some state, you bind that to your template, and all of a sudden magic happens and things just start working, and it's, it's fantastic. So if you're trying to you know, get shit out the door right now at all cost, and you don't care how hard it is to maintain later, write in Angular. Like, no, no, no doubt in my mind you should write that in Angular. The reason why people are choosing React is it's, it's verbose. Like, let's be honest here. You're, you end up writing more code, you type more, you, you're, you get it slightly closer to carpal tunnel, right? Because you're writing React. But this actually ends up being helpful in the long run because it's readable, it's maintainable, it's an it's a understandable system. 
So and, and I just give you this particular pain to um, kind of understand uh, what a, a React app looks like, right? So we have the book panel here, right? And that book panel is going to be like the layout for your entire app, right? And here you have a book form which contains a couple of drop downs, a date picker, author dialogue, drop down, button panel, all these things. You can imagine these being components that uh, maintain their own states, that maintain their own kind of different concerns. But something that I find kind of really interesting and useful about this is notice that we have like uh, a drop down here inside of the author panel, and we have a drop down panel or a drop down here inside of the book form. Uh, this allows us to kind of create these, you know, dry components, the do not repeat yourself components, right? Uh, and my, my favorite example of this is when I'm uh, creating uh, one of my workshops, I, I teach people how to create basically the Netflix UI, or at least a, a version of it. And we go through, and we go through all these pains of creating these components and crafting them really correctly and doing them well and making them flexible. But once we've, done, we've gone through the pain of creating it the first time, all of a sudden, we can start throwing these components anywhere, right? As long as you're providing them the correct amount of data, they know how to display themselves, how to manage their own state, manage their own behavior, and it's, it's amazing. Let me give you a more concrete example of that. So I use Reddit, right, because I, uh, I used to work there. Uh, with Reddit, imagine how many places you can see a post, right? A post can show up on a comment page, it can show up on the home page, it can be embedded into another page, it can be on the give gold page, it can be on the report to an admin, it can be messaged to another user. Suffice to say that a post can show up in many different ways with slightly different styling and all these different things. But largely you have the same behaviors maintained across many of these different places, right? You can upvote, you can downvote, you can give gold, you can report to the admins, you can do all these different uh, crazy things these different behaviors, right? The behavior is constant despite having all these different uh, places that a Reddit post can show up. So what's great about a React component is we can capture these behaviors, right? We can capture these behaviors and we can modify the interior, the, the interior layout, right? What's really cool is you can have what's called higher order components. We can, you can have a bigger component that's contained uh, that contains a smaller component, right? So the higher component, the outside component, uh, can contain all the behaviors, and the inner component can just be the, the dumb layout, right? You feed it data, it displays things. So you can swap those layouts and maintain all of the same behaviors, which is kind of novel for, for JavaScript, that we're able to maintain behaviors across different components. But there's all sorts of really fascinating, interesting ways that you can uh, handle React. Now, I've gone all this way, and I've, I've told you some things that I, I really like about React, but uh, this is ultimately this idea of here of props down, actions up, is ultimately what uh, I think is the greatest contribution of React to the front end ecosystem. And let me let me qualify to you what what I mean about that. Um, with React, we have what's called one way data flow, and uh, this is very much in op opposition to the two-way data binding that React and Ember kind of initially embraced. So when I say that, you have a parent component. A parent component has its own state, and it can pass that down to its children, right? So a parent component can pass down data to the child, but one, the child cannot modify the data from the parent. It, it simply has no mechanism to say, okay, parent, you, you gave me this data, now I want this data to be this. It has no ability to modify that. Now, why is that important? That's important because I can freely pass data around from that parent and not have to worry about anything that that child is going to do, right? The child can say, you know, this is assigned to something else, and the parent just gets to ignore it, which is amazing. This ends up being super, super important for the debugging story because now I have, I've reduced my surface area for bugs. By passing this data down to the child, I don't have to care that it got passed down there because the only, pr the only component able to modify that state is the parent. So that's what I say when I say props down. You can pass data freely down without any worry of it become corrupted or changed or muta mutated in some ugly way. It's immutable data to the, ch to the child. When I say actions up, this is kind of more the fluxish, redux, mobx, any your favorite ux here, right? 
that eventually the child has to have some way of letting the parent know, okay, it's like, okay, I can't modify your data, but I need to tell you that do that data needs to be modified, right? Like something needs to happen so that uh, this gets modified. In fact, let's look at this, right? So say the book form is keeping track of all of the different pieces of information so it can send it to the server, right? But the dropdown changed, right? So the dropdown is displaying to the user, you know, pick your favorite genre of fiction, right? And this person is like, no, you know, I think I actually like sci-fi more than I like uh, memoirs. So they change that. That dropdown has now had an event, right? And it needs to let the parent know that like this happened, and so it fires up what we call an action. And I think that terminology, for the most part, is consistent across all of the Xs. Except maybe mob X, but those guys are crazy. Uh, guys and girls, or women, I should say. Uh, author panel. So the uh, author panel file, files up this action to the book form, and then the book form at that point is able to modify or not modify that data based on whatever arbitrary criteria. But suffice to say that the book form gets to decide, I'm going to change this, I'm not going to change this, and it's given this information to, and it's able to do that all on its own. So that's actions up. So props down, pass down information to the, the child, actions up, the child has an event and says, hey parent, something happened. The parent can then say, cool, let's modify things, or nah, you know, I don't care that you have events. Now, I say this is really important, one, because just of what I've been explaining to you, that it's important for uh, the debugging story and the readability story, right? We kind of went over that. Um, but what's fascinating about this is uh, React had this idea, and slowly Angular, Ember, some of these other, Aurelia, some of these other frameworks are saying, hey, you know what? That's actually a really cool idea. We're going to put that in our frameworks. So this wasn't invented by React by any means. This is a, a classic computer science concept that we're talking about here. Uh, but it was definitely brought to the front-end community um, by the React team and popularized by, by React. So it's, it's important. It's something that you really need to, uh, to keep in mind. Another part of my favorite part about React is JavaScript. <laughs> Go JavaScript. I like JavaScript. I imagine there are people in here that don't, and you're wrong. Um, it's great. Uh, React is actually a pretty small library. And I say small not in the sense of kilobytes. It's actually quite large in terms of kilobytes. Um, it, it, but it is small in terms of it. you, as a developer, don't have very many methods inside of React. There's just not many that exist. I'm, I really should go count, because I've quoted this a couple of times and I'm making it up. But I'm going to guess it's like 30 to 40 methods. But what I like about that is React is knowable. You, as a developer, can know the entire surface area of React. It's, it's something that you can, can keep in your brain, all of it, if you want. Now, by raise a hand, who here in one application has used every single method inside of jQuery? OK, no hands. So we have no liars in the room, so that's good. I think that's impossible. I don't think there's any, any application ever that has used every method, because there's over 300, or at least there were at one point. So 300 methods in one library, it's unknowable. I'm, I'm going to say even the core maintainers, John Resig, anyone, none of them know, have all of that information in their brain all at once. It's, it's just too big. So what's fantastic about having a very small surface area and it being knowable is that there's not many best, like React best practices. And I, I get asked that a lot. It's like, Brian, what do you think about React best practices? And there, there's a couple things that you can do here and there. But to be totally honest, it's, it, the, the library is small enough in and of itself that the best practices for React are just JavaScript best practices, right? We're just writing JavaScript most of the time, and then we plug that JavaScript into uh, React, and we end up with, you know, beautiful symphony of UI, or you know, a terrible shit show depending on what you're building. So that's a, another favorite part of, uh, of React for me is I'm learning all these concepts about JavaScript and interesting ways of building applications, and I get to take these with me, right? So there's some day, in fact, I think my next slide, nope, nope, we'll get there. So someday React is going to die out, right? Because something new shiny is going to come out later, and it's no longer going to be in vogue, right? It's going to happen. It always does. It, it will continue to do so. But I get to take my knowledge about React and about building applications with me. Now, if 
And I, I put that in opposition to some things in Angular, right? There's a lot of domain-specific language in, in Angular. There's a lot of best practices. And unfortunately, when Angular dies, that those best practices just die with it. And that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so by nature of the way that uh, React works, it becomes more declarative that um, in the sense of declarative is very much, it's a, it's a story. You're writing a story. You're describing what you want, right? That, like, this is probably hard to read, but I'll read it to you. It says, new users redirected to their own page when I sign up for a new account. Then I should be taking my feeds page, and I should see a greeting message. Like, this is very declarative. It's a, it's a narrative. It's, it kind of wends your way through, and you can figure out, uh, you're kind of declaring, here it is, this is how it is, right? And this is, very, this is in opposition to imperative programming, which is new user re redirected to their page, given I am not logged in, and I visit the home page, and I follow sign up, and I fill in username, and I fill in password. It, it's, it's very much this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens. It's, it's, uh, it's very repetitive. It's uh, less, I don't know, it's harder to, to reason about. And uh, the imperative code is a lot harder to follow. So React in and of itself is much more uh, de uh, declarative just by the nature of JSX declaring components. The components will look at this right by writing markup that way. So React is community. And I couldn't find a good picture of the community, so you are my community today. This is kind of dark. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to just snap that business, and you all are getting tweeted later. So congratulations. That's kind of a shitty picture, but I'll say I promise there are Polish people in this. <laughs> so, and what's sort of ironic about this particular uh, demonstration is that it's community even in the sense of that I just NPM installed React Webcam and voila, right? Someone else wrote my code for me. Uh, so you can also create self-contained components, right? And then you can publish those and people can pull them in and you get things like this, right? And like even like the, you know, this is a screenshot now, right? And I can cancel the screenshot and try again. Oh, let's see if we can go over there. I think there's a little bit more light. Nope, that's worse, okay. <laughs> so, but beyond that, uh, the React com community has actually gotten quite large, and so by virtue of any large community, there's good actors, there's bad actors, but um, I'll say by and large, the React community has a lot of good actors in it. There are people out there that are really willing to help you, myself included, learn React, which I think is really awesome. Um, the Stack Overflow community is super useful and helpful. Uh, the team behind React Router, Ryan Florence and Michael Jackson, good dudes, and they're also very available to, to help you out when you have a problem. Just be nice to them or they get kind of salty about it. Um, the, the React Core team is really, really helpful. Like I. Uh, some, I wasn't at React Rally this past year, but the year before that, and they're just super available. We were harassing them about React Native on, uh, on Android, and they were like, we hate that question, but yes, it's coming. <laughs> so the React community is, by and large, very helpful, very willing to help you. There's lots of great stuff out there for you to learn React. I, I've written actually three tutorials now on React, and they're all on my GitHub if you're interested in, in watching them, or reading them, rather. You can watch them, I suppose. But yeah, going back to what I was saying right now is um, we're a fickle bunch as the bunch of the front-end developers, right? JavaScript fatigue is a real thing. Uh, like in 2007, we had Gwit. Did anyone have the misfortune of having to write Gwit? OK, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I like I see like a shaking hand in the back. That was me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had to write quit, and it was not fun. Um, then we went from GWT to EXTJS to Knockout to Backbone to Angular to React. Like the, we we we're still figuring out uh, the best way to do it with 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 JavaScript, right? We're we're still a relatively nascent community, and we have kind of unique problems, right? The, the problems of C and the problems of Rust um, are not the same problems of, of JavaScript. So we have. Uh, we write, we run our code in hostile environments, right? Like most, most P 
people don't have that problem, though. But we send our code to you, and you have to run the code in like seven different engines, right? Like this is uh, unique problems. So um, that's why I say like we're we're, we're still evolving. We're still going to figure out um, new ways to do this. Um, we're still figuring it out. React is hot right now, and it's not going to be hot later. Um, but uh, I wanted to, I have one more uh, last tech demo for you, and it's kind of fun. So. Let me see if I can get it up here real quick. Please say you're still working. Oh, holy shit. OK, yeah, it's working. OK, so many of you have probably heard of uh, WebVR. So I actually have a WebVR demo for you. This is Google Cardboard. This is just my iPhone in here. And I have, where is my? OK. So all those people, it's been, first of all, I, this is user-generated content. I have no control of what's up here. So if anything offends you, I'm deeply sorry and blame the internet. OK. Now that that's out of the way, um, these are all the people tweeting about politics right now. So that probably explains why they're terrible people. And you can look in here. I think this is a terrible idea. but no. <laughs> um, And you can see all these different people tweeting, right? So first of all, I am not a 3D programmer. I am a, a simple, humble JavaScript developer, right? But I was able to write th like a 3D web VR experience using React. And this didn't take, actually did not take me very long, which is fantastic, right? You're welcome to come up and try this. It's kind of fun. Is it still working right now? So it should be building a new. No, it looks like it stopped building. So let's see if I can get it to work again. Oh, I'd have to go in there. Hold on. So it should be building this little cylinder as we go. But again, this is all written in React. This is all JavaScript. This is all the same, same story here. Come on. There we go. OK. There you go. So now it starts building the cylinder. And actually, the hardest part by far about building this was the positioning of the pictures, right? But you can see it kind of builds. Uh, the cylinder as we go as people are tweeting about politics, which is kind of fun. So learn once, write anywhere. This is not the pipe dream of Cordova. And I'm, I pick on Cordova a little bit. It's, it's cool. I know people in here write Cordova. <laughs> um, it, but this is, Cordova is write once, run anywhere, which is really hard because you can't embrace the differences of platforms. Uh, with React, it's learn once, write anywhere. So instead of what of you're doing of uh, trying to run your same code in every single place, what you're instead you're doing is you, you learn a paradigm once and you're able to write it in multiple places, right? What's best for the command line is not the best for VR, right? Like those are just, they don't mesh together. And if I tried to write one piece of code that Im addressed both of those, it, it ended up being really shitty in both places, right? So instead, you learn one idea of how to code, and you're able to write to many platforms. And I'll say that, geez, this got big really fast. Holy shit. This is like a cylinder of destruction. <laughs> um, just to let you know, some of the things that we're doing at Netflix and, and other places is we're writing React, and we're addressing iOS. We're addressing Android. We're ad addressing the web. You can address the VR this way. We actually write React. React for PS4s, we rewrite it for Xbox Ones, for Samsung Smart TVs, um, Roku, all these different things we're all addressing with React. And so that means our core team of you know, 150 JavaScript developers can cover all these platforms and can move about freely because we're just writing React. So I think that's, that's about all the time I have. Um, but I'm super stoked you came here. So I invite you to give React a, a shot. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to Come talk to me about it. So thank you. I don't, do I have any questions? For, OK, so uh, any questions? I must have explained it perfectly. So no. <laughs> yeah.
So what he asked is, I was t comparing Angular and Angular 1. I was comparing Angular 1 and React. Um, do I think Angular 2 is a big improvement on Angular 1? So is that a good surmise of your question? Um, the answer is Angular 2 changed a lot. And um, beyond that, I, I think that it's really cool that they embrace reactive programming, like Rx and stuff like that, which my talk later today is about. So uh, I think that's really great, bringing reactive programming into the, the mainstream knowledge. Um, I think it got a lot better. I think they learned a lot from Ember. They learned a lot from React. And so I think I definitely think Angular 2 is much better. I have far less experience with it, which is why I don't I like to shit on things that I know. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's definitely compelling. So yeah, definitely give it a shot. Man, this, look at this. It's actually slowing down because it's gotten, so, holy shit. That's fantastic. OK, anyone else? That, did I answer your question, by the way? Cool. Yeah. No, that's not a hand. That's just me making it up. OK. Yeah. Can you write a Windows application with React? And the answer is yes. So I didn't talk a ton about React Native, which is probably, the, besides React DOM, the biggest thing that you can do with React. And they're doing fantastic things with React Native. And initially, it only wrote iOS applications. Then they extended it to Android. And then Microsoft is like, hey, we want to get in on this action. Can we go ahead and write React Native for Windows? And so Microsoft actually wrote React Native for Windows. I think it's launched. I think you can write native Windows applications with React, which means that you can target, I think, their entire ecosystem from Xbox all the way up to the uh, HoloLens, right? That, that, that cool thing. Um, so yes, if it's not done, it's coming soon. And the other one that at, I think at React Conf, they announced Samsung TVs also directly support uh, React Native now, which is pretty awesome. So very cool. Other questions? No? Cool. Well, thanks for coming, and uh, hopefully you come listen to me later today. <laughs> <laughs>